Okay, so in this video we're finding the value of an ordinary annuity. Uh, now first of all, an ordinary annuity means that the payment is being made at the end of the month. So you've got some, uh, some types of annuities where you pay your money into them at the start of every month. They're slightly more difficult, so we'll, we'll work on them in a minute, uh, sorry, in a future video. In this one though, we're going to be paying at the end of the month. Uh, that's a slightly simpler problem. Now in the last video, we looked at uh, linking annuities to the geometric series and I showed you here with this timeline that uh, it really is just a geometric series. This is 200. The value of this is going to be 200 times 0.01. Kind of stuff that up. It's going to be 200 times 1.01 and it continues on and on like that. We end up with this geometric series multiplied by a common factor. Uh, let's try this out. First of all, it's very, very good practice for you guys to draw in your timeline. You're certainly going to be asked to do it on any occasion. You don't have to put everything into your timeline though. So time 0, time 12, that's definitely something you've got to put in there. Put the last payment in. Put maybe the last, the, uh, the two before it. And we can like put some little dots in here. And that one over there. Now all of these payments uh, are going to accumulate at the end of the thing into one term. Now, if I pull up my YouTube video, let's move this. Oops. just move this over a little bit. Uh, you can see here that our the sum of you can see here that our geometric series, the sum of the geometric series is equal to a bracket r to the power of n minus one over r minus one. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at how that might look for our question here. Okay, so I've got my formula here. The future value of an annuity or geometric series, I guess, is a bracket r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. Uh, let's put in our values here. Now, a is the starting value. Now, it's kind of a bit weird because our starting value is kind of the last value. And we, we sort of work backwards to do our geometric series. Uh, 200. Not that it matters. It's just the payment size, really. R is the common ratio. Now, as I said before, in the last video, I kind of stuffed it up here. My common ratio isn't 0 0.01. That's a bit silly. My common ratio is 1.01. So let's just get that back up. 1.01. .01. Now, N is going to be the number of terms. Now, the number of terms here is going to be 12. If you count up all of your 200s, you'll have 12 there. Uh, minus 1. Over... Uh, R, the common ratio, minus 1. And you can see what that does. When we do that, we're going to end up with dividing it by 0 0.01. Uh, now, I haven't talked about 0 0.01 here, but I hope you, you, you've you um, got that under control. 12% per annum compounding monthly. If it's 12% per annum, but it's compounding monthly, it's increasing by 1% per month. That's where this 0.1 comes from. Uh, you should be able to type that into your calculator directly and end up with an answer. Uh, I'm going to give that a crack. Okay, so I've done that on my calculator and I've ended up with an answer of $2536.50. Now, the important part here is that you stop because occasionally you're going to stuff these up. I, uh, I spent, uh, the video was paused just then and I did my question and then I thought, did I stuff this up? Did I not stuff this up? Think about it rationally. You've put $200 in the bank every month for 12 months. So first of all, figure out how much money you actually put in the bank. $200 times 12, that's $2,400. So you've taken $2,400 out of your pocket, out of your wallet, and put it in the bank. Um, now, if we look at our answer, we've got uh, $2,536.50. So that's an extra uh, $136.50 that it looks like we've earned in interest over those 12 months. That seems plausible to me. Uh, and you'll get a feel for the plausibility of these as you go along. And now, I wasn't just happy to do that. I also went one step further. And I went into my handy-dandy Excel here. And I did each value. 200 is the last value on the list. And then multiplied that by 1.01, .01, and I got 202 multiplied that and I got 204.02. You can see it continues on until this last number. Now I can show you my formula. 
This last number was just me adding up all of those terms. And sure enough, $2,536.50. Um, there's also a different way to do it on your calculator that I'll show you in a future video. Uh, do, do, do. I think we're about done there, guys. Uh, this is finding the value of an ordinary annuity using the geometric sequence, uh, series. Make sure that you're practicing them. And when you practice them, before you look at the answer, ask yourself the question, Did does that number make sense? This is real world stuff, putting money in a bank, pulling money out at the end. So you should be able to get a feel for whether it makes sense. Okay, that's finding the value of an ordinary annuity.